बी रेडी स्टार जेंटल मैन ऑफ द जूरी यू आर द सोल जजेस ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ऑफ फैक्ट इन्वॉल्व इन दिस केस यू आर नॉट टू बी इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय एनी थिंग दैट द कोर्ट हैज सेड और दैट यू इमेजिंड दैट द कोर्ट हैज थॉट इन रिगार्ड टू द फैक्ट्स इट इज द प्रिवलेज एंड ड्यूटी ऑफ द कोर्ट टू कॉल द जूरीज अटेंशन टू क्वेश्चन ऑफ फैक्ट इफ ही सो डिजायर्स बट इन द एंड यू मस्ट बी योर ओन जजेज एज टू वट द फैक्ट्स आर अंडर द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द कोर्ट एज टू द लॉ द लॉ यू विल टेक फ्रॉम द कोर्ट एंड फ्रॉम नो बडी एल्स द फर्स्ट प्रोपोजिशन आई वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रेस अपॉन योर माइंड जेंटलमैन इन दिस केस इज दैट यू मस्ट नॉट बी इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय प्रिजुडाइस और पैशन और सिंपथी दैट इज ए वाइटल क्वेश्चन ए मोस्ट वाइटल क्वेश्चन फॉर ए जूरी इन ए केस ऑफ दिस करेक्टर यू हैव सीन दिस मैंस लेग यू नो हिज इंजरीज बट यू मस्ट नॉट कंसिडर दोज इंजरीज एट ऑल और द क्वेश्चन ऑफ डैमेजेस इफ एनी अंटिल यू हैव कंसिडर्ड टू और थ्री वाइटल प्रोपोजिशंस इन दिस केस इट इज राइट फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स टू बी इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय काइंडनेस एंड बाय सिंपथी बट इट इज नॉट राइट फॉर जूरर्स और कोर्ट्स नथिंग कैन बी मोर रॉन्गफुल यू मस्ट होल्ड द स्केल्स ऑफ जस्टिस हेयर फेयरली इम्पार्शली एंड ब्लाइंडली एंड कंसिडर द लॉ एंड द फैक्ट्स नथिंग एल्स यू हैव ए राइट टू सेम्पेथाइज and give your own money to this plaintiff if you want to but you have no right to give anybody else's money except under the law that is a vital proposition more vital i think in the trial of lawsuits than in any other question the jury should do its duty regardless of what is involved and what the injuries are courts are influenced by prejudice and passion and influenced wrongly but it is the duty of the court as well as the jury to withstand prejudice passion and sympathy the declaration in this case states that the plaintiff was in the employ of the defendant which was a corporation engaged in business as shown here by the evidence and that it was the duty of the defendants there are two of them to use reasonable care and diligence to keep and maintain said steps which have been heretofore described or stairway in a reasonably safe condition of repair so that the said plaintiff might perform all duties and labors required of him safely and the plaintiff avers that the said defendants disregarding their duty in that behalf carelessly wrongfully and negligently allowed said steps or stairway to become and remain in a loose tottering decayed unsafe and dangerous condition so that whilst said plaintiff was undertaking in the exercise of due care to go upon or over said steps in passing to his said duties there and was then and there conveying a ladle of molten metal thereupon said steps did then and their tip or turn with the said plaintiff and as a result of their dangerous and unsafe condition as aforesaid by reason thereof the said plaintiff was then and there injured and damaged in a certain amount one vital element of that declaration contained in every count 
I want to call your attention to where it describes the steps, what the steps were and what the steps did. The plaintiff does not charge and you cannot try the question as to whether those steps originally were sufficient or not. They admit that proposition, but they charge that they were loose, that they became and remained in a loose, tottering, decayed, unsafe and dangerous condition and that as a result of that condition they tipped and turned with the said plaintiff and threw him off. Now they must prove that and the proof of anything else would not help the plaintiff. The plaintiff must prove that they were in a tottering condition, decayed condition, unsafe and dangerous condition and as a result of that, that they tipped and turned the plaintiff over. Now that is their charge and that they must prove by the preponderance of the evidence. Defendants deny that and every other proposition in the three or four counts in the declaration. The burden of proof is upon the plaintiff to prove every allegation in the declaration by the preponderance of the evidence, the greater weight of the evidence. Now it is the duty of the defendants to use due care and caution to furnish a reasonably safe place for its employees to work and to use due care and caution to furnish reasonably safe appliances for them to work with. In this case, it was the duty of the defendants to use due care and caution to furnish these steps which are admitted in the beginning to have been reasonably safe and to use due care and caution to keep those steps in a reasonably safe condition. That is to do as reasonably prudent men would do under the same circumstances and conditions in order to keep them safe the same as you would do if you were in that business or any man would do if he were in that business. Employers are not insurers, they simply do the best they can. The law requires them to do that as reasonably prudent men. The plaintiff and other employees assume the ordinary risks of their business, the ordinary dangers that they must know and they must see. But it is incumbent upon the plaintiff to use reasonable care and caution to avoid injury. The burden is on the defendant, however, to prove that he did not use such reasonable care and caution.